Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I make a desk with a drawer and find a hidden surprise in the slab. Stay tuned. This build started off kind of interesting because I got this really cool, highly figured, tons of color, amazing walnut slab from Gobi Walnut there on the left, but I decided it needed a small accent piece on the right, so I had to go buy that big, kind of bland looking piece because it fit the contour just perfect and the color was really, really close. The slab on the left was $250 and the slab on the right was $300. So the piece I'm using only six inches of costs more than the piece that I was making the entire desk out of. If you wanna make a desk, I found the perfect size is about 30 inches by 60 inches. And this one wasn't quite long enough. It was about 59 inches and I made it actually slightly larger. So it's about 59 inches by 32 inches. This slab really just clicked together. You can see there's really only one way that edge could have landed on that main slab. So this build went together really quickly. The only thing was it was slightly thicker than the main slab, so I just had to give it a few passes on the planer. And this is a Grizzly 20 inch planer, it has a helical head, which is more than enough to remove the material needed on this small piece. You could even use a bench top planer for a project like this. Overall, like I said, went pretty easy. I'm using a Porter Cable Restore and a nylon wheel just to remove all of the kind of strands and little bits of bark that are left, making sure I get a good solid epoxy bond when I make that pour. People ask if I'm able to reuse my molds, and the answer is, yeah, usually. I only had to remove the sides. You can see they get a little bit chipped up and broken off from the last table build, but I can always make a smaller table from them. So usually get about two or three builds per table because I have to keep cutting the size down until they're eventually too small to use on a project. Sealing the edges or not sealing the edges seems to be a really hot topic issue in the epoxy table world right now. I know the Black Forest guys came out with a video saying never to seal your edges because they had some tables that came apart after sealing their edges. And I totally respect that. I know Dylan pretty well. I've talked to him about this actually quite a while before he came out with that video. I still seal both sides of my slab. One reason you want to seal the top and the bottom is because when you make your pour and the epoxy goes underneath, the top can potentially warp from absorbing moisture from the air. I also seal my sides because I use this black epoxy and it can really, really uh, soak in there and stain the wood. Generally, the Black Force guys use a metallic pigment and that powdered pigment doesn't soak into the wood like this liquid uh, dye does. So that is one of the reasons why I still seal my edges. Also, I haven't made as many tables as the Black Forest guys, but I've probably made about 50 of these and I've sealed every single edge and not one of them has even had a tiny crack. I am super, super diligent about cleaning up all the softwood and removing anything that could compromise that bond and getting a really, really good scuff. So I personally haven't had any issues. I have had issues with staining, so that is why I still opt to seal my edges. So in the end, it's gonna be up to you, but I seal my edges and make sure to get a really, really good scuff or pour while that uh, seal coat is still tacky. As always, I am using the liquid glass epoxy. And as always, I like to remind people that they are a supporter of my channel. They are a sponsor of mine, but they are also my favorite epoxy to use. So come to your own conclusions on whether or not I am telling the truth there, but I have only been using liquid glass for about the six, eight months and have not had a single problem with it. I did want to show one thing here though. I was intentionally only mixing in the center to show you guys, look at the edges there, how the edges are actually still clear. And this is what happens if you do not scrape the sides while you're mixing your epoxy. I get a lot of people message me problems they've had with the epoxy not curing right, not liquid glass or any brand in particular, but any epoxy. And you really, really need to scrape the sides. It's much more important to mix well than to mix long. That's something people ask me is how long should they mix? I usually mix for maybe two or three minutes, but mixing well is much more important than mixing long. And if you're wondering what was happening there, I always pop the bubbles in the bucket before pouring in the table. I want to take a second to thank all the new viewers I have out there. If you haven't seen my videos, I really appreciate you tuning in because I know you have a ton of choices of things to watch. And I also want to thank all my regular viewers because I put a new video out every Thursday and it's actually getting to the point where I'm starting to get to know a lot of people out there. I know that Tom Garber is working over in Ghana and I get to talk to him about that. And I know that Mike Hormer is a photographer and he's cool enough that he gives me professional photography advice in the comments for free. So I feel pretty lucky to get that too. I know MC's Creations is Mario down in Brazil. So it is really cool engaging with these people all over the world. So if you are new to the video and you want to give me some tips on your field of expertise, I love getting advice. I'm not one of these guys that's too proud to take advice from my viewers. It's actually one of the best parts about being a content creator. So 
So if you want to come along for the journey, I do appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, if you hit that little bell in the corner, because then you will be notified when I put a new video out every week, Thursday at noon. You probably notice that these legs are a pretty wild design and they are made by flowy line design and i have used his legs quite a few times on previous projects they are really good quality and he is great to deal with his name is alex jew super responsive he has an etsy page as well as a regular website and i will include links to his website so you can shop his entire design my wife is in the furniture industry and she goes all over the world looking at these furniture markets and seeing the latest designs and she said that she has never seen designs like his so it really says a lot because she sees the same thing over and over and over again so it is really an honor to work with alex and have these legs on my tables I realize I am rushing this table leg installation a little bit, but the good news is I have a full video and a step-by-step -step blog on how to install table legs properly. You need to allow for wood movement, and that is what these threaded inserts allow for, as well as enabling the table to be assembled and disassembled an infinite number of times, whereas if you use just lag bolts, you could really start to auger out that hole after taking it apart just a couple times. Now I get to do the fun stuff, and by fun stuff I mean the stuff I hate the most. It is all the sanding. And one tip I can offer you when you do those little epoxy touch-ups there is hit them with a sander which will warm the epoxy up slightly and then make the scraping go much smoother. Otherwise that epoxy can be so brittle that it will actually kind of chip out of those small holes that you filled. So hit it up with a sander and then go ahead and scrape it. Now I moved on to the CA glue touch-ups and that is what that little cup is with the activator. I touch it up with a tiny little awl and then hit it with the activator and it is ready to sand in just a couple seconds. It's a really, really cool addition to my consumable list is this CA glue with an activator. And you can see just how fast it is ready to sand. It's just a few seconds and it fills those tiny little imperfections really nicely. One of the reasons I like making desks so much is that they are so easy to move around. Unlike a 10 foot table that about crushed me a few weeks ago, this one I can maneuver pretty easily. You can see there I'm using a photography light to do all my inspections so you can really, really see any imperfections. Those photography lights are really generally cheaper than shop lights and they work so much better. They're battery powered so you can take them anywhere and the color is better, the brightness is better. So don't use a shop light, use a photography light. Once again, I am kind of rushing this finish process in this video here, but once again, I have a full blog and a full video on a step-by-step -step process to apply the finish exactly as I'm going to apply it here. So I will include a link to that in the video description below. If you have any questions that aren't answered in that video or this video, definitely ask me in the comments below. If you have any additional questions, I also have started offering video consultations where I will meet with you via Skype and we can go over whatever it is you want to go over, whether it's finishing, marketing, how to build your social media pages, anything you want to talk about. This was actually a cool little surprise. These were actually two bullets from the middle of the tree that were exposed when we were planing it up at Creative Woodworking. So kind of a neat little thing that I decided to leave in the table. I am constantly trying to improve my skill and improve the products I use. I'm always reevaluating other epoxies. Even though I'm sponsored by Liquid Glass, I wanna make sure I'm using the best product. The same goes for finish. I have been using Rubio Monaco lately. I am not sponsored by them whatsoever. They don't even send me free product, although I feel like they should at least do that. Rubio, are you listening? But for now, I just actually really like the product. I love the way it looks. I love the protection I get from it. It doesn't mean that I won't find a better finish someday. It won't, doesn't mean I won't find a better way to apply it. I am always trying to get better. So I know I used to use a lot of Osmo. I have used some other finishes too. This is the best one of all the ones I found currently. And I will continue to research, continue to try to find the best ones. I luckily have the budget that I can experiment with some of these kind of more expensive finishes, whereas most of you out there can't really afford to spend a hundred bucks on a can of finish just to see if it's better than another hundred dollar can of finish. So Rubio is a great finish. I love it. I have had a lot of success. I don't have any intention of stop using it, but I'm going to keep continuing to look and see what else is out there. One of my complaints with Rubio is that you can't really continue to add coats to build sheen on top of this second coat that I'm about to apply here. And they don't even really want you to apply a second coat. I did talk to them and I did find a way that they would allow me to add a second coat. Osmo, you can get a much higher sheen if you keep building those coats. So I did like that aspect. I wish Rubio would find a way to get this same protection and allow a build of coats like the Osmo does.
I have recently actually gone through my entire house and refinished every piece that I had finished with Odie's Oil and Osmo and refinished all of them with Rubio Monaco. And this is not for a video that I'm doing. This is just because I needed a piece that looked great and could hold up to everyday use. So that should tell you a little bit about how much confidence I have in this finish. I've had comments on some past desks that I've built saying, that's not a desk, that's a table. Desks have drawers. And so this one is actually getting a drawer for once. And this is a desk that I am building for my father-in-law. I'm not even getting paid for it, if you can believe that. And the one thing he asked for was a drawer. So I felt like I had to make him exactly what he wanted. The problem is I don't make a lot of drawers. And for you guys, I'm gonna rush through this drawer build because I don't think that I am the drawer expert. And I don't want you exactly copying me or trying to use me as your model for drawer building. I am really good at building resin tables. I am just learning how to properly make drawers. So I'll take you through my process because in the end it made a really cool looking drawer that worked really well. But again, I'm not a, not a cabinet maker. I don't make these all the time. I just wanted a really cool looking drawer that would function exactly as I needed it. I was going for kind of a particular look. And so what I did was I cut three sides that were all the same height and thickness. And then I had one kind of really thick bullnose piece and you'll understand why I made it so oversized in a minute or two. You can see here, I'm just running a quarter inch dado through all four pieces. So this is gonna give that plywood there somewhere to sit. Box joints or dovetails or half blind dovetails are always super cool. Again, I'm not a cabinet maker, so I was attaching all these with dominoes, which is gonna be plenty strong enough, but I suppose dovetails would have been a little bit more trick. And if you haven't seen this tool before, it is really cool. It is my Festool vacuum clamp. It enables me to kind of work a lot more flexibly, able to spin these around, up and down, get the sides and the ends really easily instead of having to clamp each piece down individually. It does speed up the work quite a bit. Anytime you're doing a glue up that is like this, where you have these sharp 90 degree corners, whether it's for a drawer or a table leg or anything else, it is really worth it to take the time and properly tape everything off. You can see there that I have everything cut with an X-Acto knife. I actually used my Japanese marking knife, but an X-Acto knife will work just as well. And that will save you so much time in the end when you go to sand and finish these. Since this drawer was gonna be suspended from the top, I didn't want a separate drawer front. So this is why that little dado square is stuck there. So this is what I came up with. And I don't know if I invented this or if other people do this already, but since I wanted a one piece drawer front, this is what I had to come up with. Just cut a little bitty square in there, added a little bit of wood glue, which by the way, I'm using tight bond three. And I just learned from a really reputable cabinet shop they don't recommend using tight bond three with walnut. They said the original tight bond is the one to use. And you'll have to ask Creative Woodworking why that is, but they said that this tight bond three has been known to fail and the really, really high end shops use the original tight bond. And I'd actually posted that on my Instagram and I got a ton of people saying that they've never had a problem with tight bond three and it works great. And I personally have never had a problem with tight bond three. However, I did get quite a few messages from people that said that they have had quite a few failures on their cutting boards with Titebond 3. So I am gonna pivot and start using the Titebond original when gluing up this walnut. What turned out to be trickier than I thought was going to be attaching these drawer slides to the underside of this slab because I originally wanted a really cool undermount hidden push to open soft close trick drawer slide. And apparently that's not a thing in the drawer slide world because most of the time they go in cabinets and they're undermount to something solid underneath, not hung down from a slab like this. So I had to kind of pirate some brackets off of one drawer slide and attach them to another drawer slide that was actually a soft close. So in the end, I didn't love that you can see the drawer slides from the side. You can see underneath, it doesn't look great. You don't see them a lot from the sides. I'll show you some videos of me opening and closing here in a second, but this is the best that I could do. And they are a little bit hard to open because it has that soft close aspect. So don't love that either, but it's really even, it's really smooth. Action on it works great, but I was hoping for something a little bit better in terms of that hidden aspect and maybe a push to open. I get a fair amount of questions on how I take my photos and I use a method called light painting. It is definitely not something I invented, but it is a pretty cool technique that enables a guy like me in a garage to get photos like this. So if you want to know how I take my photos, I made a video about a year or so ago. It's a pretty boring video if I'm being honest, but it is pretty informative. So I will include a link to that in the video description below. Also these legs by flowy line photographed really nicely because they are in a really cool flat black. So thanks so much to flowy line for supplying the legs to this project. All right. It is that time again this week, start your question or comment with the project that you want to see next. 
I feel like I make too many of these epoxy table videos, but you guys keep watching them. So if you want to see more, I will keep making them. But start your question or comment with the project you want to see next, and that way I will know you watched the entire video, and I promise I will answer all of your questions first. As always, thanks so much. Please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Have a great week.